Good morning. Um, so the other day I shared a story surrounding um, ceremony while I was in Panama for a tribal gathering and my phone died and I it didn't save and so I wanted to keep a copy of sharing this story so I'm doing it again for anybody who's already seen this so I will begin <laughs> this year on February 15th to 25th I had the honor of traveling to the country Panama on the Caribbean coastline in the jungle is where we stayed and this was uh, an event that was organized called the tribal gathering there were 60 tribes um, coming uh, from 30 different countries um, as well as some of the most powerful shaman in the world and it was on this beach in this paradise in the jungle um, with all different types of people on the healing journey and I was invited by my dear friend Elizabeth April and we had the most incredible time together um, so I wanted to share with you why this trip kind of happened for me so I am on a shamanic path I'm studying shamanism and using shamanism to heal myself from uh, different traumas that I co-created in my life and uh, to overcome them, to be, be fully present in what gives me peace and joy, and also to heal generations before me and heal generations to come, like my three children now. <laughs> They're amazing teachers. So I went there um, almost as kind of like uh, a reward or a final step in uh, this process of aspects of my story. Life is a walk. I'm sure there's going to be more things coming up as I go. I'm sure I'll be here late into my 80s. <laughs> so I flew to Panama. It was, I passed out the entire time. I haven't been on a plane in a long time and I couldn't feel my feet. So I passed out and um, I get there finally late at night and there's a lineup of 300 people. <laughs> So we had to wait uh, to get everybody checked in and it, it was fine. It was just a bunch of people really grateful to be there. It was nighttime so it wasn't too hot. There was no bugs. Um, and then the next day, I woke up and I just really embraced the ocean. Um, for me, that's where ceremony began. I was deeply, deeply loved by the ocean and I could feel this, the ions and the electromagnetic frequencies and currents just pulling and cleansing from my body. And I was dancing with the ocean and walking and letting the waves touch my feet and my legs and drench my clothes. I think I got my cell phone wet and my passport wet the first day. So this is where ceremony began. I felt so comforted by the ocean. And, um, and then as I was kind of moving towards being a part of the camp a little bit more, it was almost like people couldn't see me. This is not a bad thing. This is not a bad thing. It was just an observation. And you could feel this divide. And like there was a lot of high energy and excitement. And there was this, definitely this clear separation between everybody that was there. And um, so... Fast forward to a couple of days, um, I had met a woman named Sarah at the airport and I was talking to her about ceremonies and I was curious what type of ceremonies does she, is she aware of? She's a Campbell practitioner and she travels through South America um, among other places that's where she's been localized. And she described a ceremony called Toad Ceremony. And the Toad Ceremony, um, she said, completely freed her um, it's a complete love and light you have a complete ego death you finalize all those pieces of your story and your life that are in your way so that you can look at everything through the filter of love and she said ever since she's done it all she sees is love and I'm like that's exactly what I need it felt so comforting and loving and I just really felt that this was the what I needed that final step that final push to walk with peace and light so we get to the ceremony start. So fast forward again back to um, I'm on the land, I'm on the property, I'm soaking up with the ocean, feeling incredible. 
and um, we all the shaman come in. You can feel you can feel them enter. It was like this boom 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 boom. Boom, boom. You could feel Mother Earth, you could feel the ground, you could feel the hearts of the shaman all kind of uniting. It was just so powerful. At first it was like, what is that? And um, so next, um, it was time to, the next day, it was time to listen to the shaman. They cleared out this really beautiful spot around a Bodhi tree, the tree of peace in the jungle. and. Um, all the different shamans took their turns describing their ceremonies, describing their medicines, describing their backgrounds, and just kind of introducing themselves. Um, and I had spent the previous day meditating and asking spirit, do I need a, a ceremony, right? Is, is the ocean enough? Is the traveling enough? And I ended up going up to the kingdom of light which I frequent often, and it's actually my home. It's my original home um, to my memories. And I saw my highest father and my highest husband, and they both said, yes, this is a great ceremony for you. Um, and I said, well, I want to come home. I want to taste. I want to smell. I want to talk. I want to dance. I want to laugh um, at, in the kingdom of light. And I'm like, this is why, you know, like I want to do this ceremony. This is what I'm looking for, and I want to finalize my ego death, you know? I just want to add, I don't think there really is a fully finalizing of an ego death as a human. Um, it's just more of an ego death of more of like awareness of that I don't need to hold on to my previous story anymore. So um, so they, they said it was okay. I had to go ahead. And my final piece was I wanted to see who the shamans were, who the medicine people were, just look them in the eye, hear, listen to them speak, see if their vibrations and frequencies and intentions were aligned with mine. And I take ceremony very, very seriously. It's a very powerful tool to help somebody overcome um, so much in life, depression, anxiety, disease, uh, addiction. Um, I said depression, you get my point. So, um, I take the ceremony very, very seriously and I don't do it often because I take it so seriously. I, to me, ceremony is part of the work. You have to actually work on what's happening with you and take the teachings from the ceremony and apply them to your life. And that's where the healing happens, right? So anyway, so I take it very seriously. So I had one final step. I wanted to see these shaman and see if they were right for me. And I was listening to them first. The first shaman that came up was an African shaman, and he was doing a ceremony called the Iboga. The Iboga is um, comes from a, a family of plants. That's three plants in one particular family, and the root is where they get the medicine from. Um, I do have it written down, but I don't have it with me right now. I'm outside. <laughs> And um, so, if anybody's watching this and they're curious, just message me, and I can pass that information on to you. Uh, so he expressed that, um, and this really stood out to me, and this is important to share right now because it's gonna, I'm going to lace back to it and in, in a little bit further ahead. So he expressed that the aboga is very powerful. It's also an extreme ego death. It's also like totally opening up to the universe and the cosmos and the greatest truth there is. But it's so powerful that if you're drinking coffee, if you're a medication, if you've been drinking, even in the week leading up to taking the aboga, that's going to be amplified and your body might go into distress or shock. So traditionally, when you do iboga ceremony, you would actually purify your body for a minimum of three weeks before you do this ceremony. And purifying means being aware of your thoughts. It means um, releasing yourself from prescription medication. It means detoxing from things like alcohol, even marijuana, <laughs> um, uh, prescriptions, anything that um, uh, works with your psychology and your body's biochemistry with your psychology. So, <clears throat> um, and he promised everyone that they would have a good ceremony in spite of not doing all doing the work in the, the most traditional way. So I did see a documentary a couple weeks ago, um, just a five minute documentary clip on Facebook, and they were saying how Traditionally, when you do the aboga ceremony, you actually live with the shaman for up to eight weeks. Like this is a massive, massive life altering process. Um, 
So that was the aboga ceremony and that was described. I heard it, noted. I started getting a real big headache when I was in there. Like it was getting worse and worse and I was getting some deep, deep nausea. And um, what happened with the deep nausea and the headache was I could feel um, the polarity divide between people who were there on the healing path and people who were looking for something else. Like maybe they hadn't been doing the work. Maybe they were looking for that euphoric high. I could hear thought waves of, I hope I get my money's worth and just different kind of energy like that. And that's just not where I am on my path at this time. And maybe I was at some point, I wouldn't recall now. <laughs> I'm so pure. <laughs> and, um, so I had, so I would, the headache was getting worse. And the next people that came up to speak were this couple, it was a medicine couple from the jungles in Mexico who were doing the toad ceremony. So this is the one I said at the beginning that interests me. And it was my, I just wanted to see which shamans were doing it. This was exactly who I was hoping was doing it. I loved their energy. I loved their regalia. I loved the fact that they were a man and a woman couple doing it together. I really love that gender polarity and that balance. Um, and so... I, I, my mind was made up. I left the jungle at that point. As soon as I left, I went back into the ocean and my headache was gone. Um, so n now I have all my information. Now I go and sign up. So what I signed up for was a sacred sweat ceremony. So the sacred sweat ceremony, my path has been mostly sacred sweat ceremony. So I already had the information I need for that. There is no plant medicine with that. The medicine is connecting with all the elements of earth and the ancient ones. And doing the ceremony is you enter the womb, which is the anippi. And in the womb, you close it and you there's like um, rocks and stones that are heated and a fire for the whole day. So they're really red. And then they put water on it and sacred herbs and the smoke and the steam kind of support your body and releasing and bringing things up. And then you have an elder um, shaman person. This was uh, actually the one who was hosting this was a male. My first time being in a sacred sweat with a male as the leader. And his name was Little Thunder and he was from the Lakota Sioux tribe. Uh, and he was also a sun dog warrior. So sun dog warriors are traditional warriors, ancient warriors that, um, Basically what they do is they tie themselves, they hook into their chest and they tie themselves to a tree and they stay hooked onto that tree sometimes for several days without food, without water until the sun totally does whatever, purifies them, dehydrates them, that they collapse. Once they do this, then um, it's a huge religious sacrifice. Um, I don't think the word religious is accurate, but I, th I was just trying to use it as a descriptive word. Um, but it's a, it's a very huge sacrifice, a ceremonial sacrifice. And they do this to take on the pain of all the women that um, and be giving childbirth or sacrificing their bodies for their people. And they do this also for um, fallen warriors in their tribes or anybody who's sick or ill. It's a, it's a really, really honorable practice. So this was the sun dog warrior who was the leader of this. He was a really nice, very kind person. And so it, that was my first ceremony. And what happened, that was at three o'clock on the Tuesday. And um, I, what happened was we had to communicate and say prayers to the stones because the stones are the most ancient beings here on earth. So the idea is that when you heat them up, you're opening them up to reveal their kashik, to reveal their memories, to reveal their knowledge. And they, they ask you to express and reveal your knowledge. It encourages your body to intuitively open up its own akashic so that you can release that which just doesn't serve you on um, whatever level that you're working with. You know, it can be from your diet to relationships to an ancient uh, past life story it can be any of that it's just whatever's not serving you that comes up for you so the stones are there to free and release this the steam and the smoke the enclosed area it kind of puts you in a bit of a stress state and you have to breathe and become peaceful and that's when you can feel the divide of what doesn't serve you coming off of your body. And part of that is to verbalize it. The word of mouth is very powerful. We're spell casters naturally. And you verbalize uh, whatever it is that you're verbalizing. And so if we just said prayers to the stones and my teacher this year is humbleness. Every year I have a new teacher. Last year it was circle. The year before was respect. And um, 
this year my theme is humbleness and I, I it was also a part of the ego death humbleness I'm learning makes you non-reactive to other stories that are around you and that's what I needed help with you know like that to recognize that I'm okay no matter what's happening and that's where humbleness comes in it's like when you're humble you trust that you know the earth's got your back spirit's got your back and you can just breathe and so I um, the stones, I think, are such a pure example of what humbleness is because they hold so much information. But did you know? Did you know that? <laughs> did we know that? Do you know that we're walking on the most ancient knowledge keepers and ancestors, our beneath our feet at all times, supporting us quietly, patiently listening? Um, so I, I express gratitude for their teachings of humbleness, and um, and that I acknowledge. Um, their ancient knowledge and how beneficial it is and all that they do and once I did this my brain turned into a stone <laughs> and these patterns started appearing on the back of my head it was like a blue circle a yellow circle and then a red star and it was on the back of my head which is this is um this is a really high nerve area. This is where PTSD kind of sits in your body. This sends like your thought waves and visual patterns into your front that create your reality. So they were going into where my mind was co-creating a reality, whether I liked what it was doing or not. So it was going in there and I could feel these waves rushing through my body. And it was almost like the rhythm of the frequency of the stone. It was like, vroom, vroom, vroom. And it was just unbelievable. So after I did this, I'm still trying to hold my space, but this, the nippy was packed. There was a lot of people in there. I'd never been with that many people before. And so I was feeling kind of right about here, a sense of panic from the collective in there. It was almost like none of them had experienced this before. And they were like, I didn't know they would be so closed in. I can't breathe. What if, what if, what if, what if? And so I had put my head on my knee and my hands on the ground as soon as I entered. So I was breathing from the earth and I could feel that. And I called in the dragon energy to protect me because I was like, well, I, I don't want this to interfere with what's happening. You know, like when you do ceremony, it's personal. It's your own process. You know, you share space, but it's an honorable share. You don't interfere. So I called in that dragon um, to support um, not connecting with that collective strange feeling that was happening and hovering. As soon as I called in the dragon, it was this gold and green dragon and it comes in into my body and then the whole room simultaneously starts going I inadvertently shared the dragon medicine with the whole space. So they were all doing dragon breath to stabilize their emotions and their thought patterns. So that was really cool. So the next round happens and um, Little Thunder had this really beautiful staff. It was an eagle head with an eagle wing and some other things that were a part of his healer's journey and his earth walk. And so... Um, as I'm sitting there, a little thunder's staff etherically comes in and enters my body. <sighs> this was really intense. So what happened from here is um, I started kind of almost coming energetically to the center of the Anippi. The stones are in the center and we're sitting around in a circle in the stones. And I come to that center point and I could feel my bodily funneling everybody. I totally became a part of the Anippi and the energy cycling. And it was too much for me. My heart started pounding so hard. I, I suddenly couldn't breathe. My body was like tingling everywhere like I was going to faint. So I got up and I left the Anippi. I've never done this before. So I got up and I left. And of course I'm naked because I think like if you're going to have a rebirth, who wears clothes in the womb? So I get out of the Anippi naked and muddy. <laughs> And uh, I lay my belly down on the ground because this is, this is a teaching that I've received from a beautiful medicine woman elder named Linda Rose and that you put your belly on the ground and you give that energy to Earth, Mother Earth. You let Mother Earth help you. She's part of that ceremony, that support. And so I did that. And it was like this Taurus energy coming around me into the bottom. Vroom, vroom. And then poof, I just left my body. It became an eagle. And I was flying up so high and fast. And I was in the astral sky suddenly. You know, like that starry night sky that we see. Um, and I was just kind of flying around. And I suddenly see a huge cube. And the cube is 
um, almost like a mirage, but you can see the edges, but not quite. Like it's a cube, right? But it's it's subtle. So I go to step in the cube and I look down at my feet and they're human feet again. They're not talons like an eagle. And I go and I take two, three steps and poof, I don't remember anything. I came back maybe one minute later, five minutes later, I don't know. And from there, I kind of like sat up and I put my back to Little Thunders, but on the outside and I helped to hold space with my divine feminine energy for the rest of the NIP. Following this, I had a beautiful swim and a waterfall. It was incredible to clear and cleanse and feel that other part of the mother um, wash away everything that I had kind of taken on in that moment. So continue on with ceremony. This was this was a good 24 to 48 hours, um, but I think it's important to share and I really feel that it, I want to share. I don't share my ceremonies. Typically ceremonies are very private and you keep them for yourself. But my heart just says to share this one. So here I am. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so next we have, uh, oh, I had made friends with a mystic from South Africa named Gum. <laughs> Let me repeat that. Gum. I hope anybody heard the click. Now, um, Gum means mystic. And he was a Bushman from South Africa who was a medicine person and a mystic. And he spoke his native language, Gum, is from the Khoisan language, I believe it's called. I'm, I'm very likely mispronouncing it. And I, I, I'm deeply regretful that I'm not better at other languages. <laughs> um, so we became good friends. We really bonded. I had been seeing him the last year in visions in a desert and in other places wearing his regalia, like goat skins and feathered headdress. Um, uh, for over a year and then I saw him in person at this tribe you can imagine this tribal gathering you can imagine how I was just whew, blown away and so in awe and I went and I remember humbleness is my teacher so whew, I pulled on humbleness grounded myself when I went and spoke with him and I I guess I said things that triggered him he was quiet but then he approached me later on and he um he said he knew that I would be coming to talk to him and um, he was aware of well, like who I am on an energetic level and um, we just talked about different things and he, he was saying to me that I see that you're like me and I, what a compliment and so I just said thank you what are you gonna say right humbleness is quiet <laughs> and so we had agreed to meet on the beach at 4 a.m. to do quantum light breathing together. So this was after my sacred sweat ceremony. So I go, I get something to eat. I was already clean from the waterfall. I get myself to bed. And then at 4 a.m. I get up and I go and meet this mystic Bushman from South Africa on the beach for quantum light breathing. Like, oh my gosh, very surreal. And I was giddy and exhausted. <laughs> So we did the breathing, we did it with movements. It was really, really wonderful. Um, I'm gonna be incorporating some of the breathing techniques that he shared um, in um, some workshops that I'm divining at this time. They're coming up shortly. So um, <clears throat> so that happens and then we, we, we wake up, or we finish our thing, it's the sun rising, and it's now it's time for my toad ceremony with the two Mexican uh, shaman from the jungles. And there's a totem pole in the center of the space, and that's where we're supposed to go and meet. So I say goodbye to my friend. His, he was actually went by the name Uprise. He's also a DJ. He uses a lot of sound with his breathing, and he's taken on becoming a DJ. It's really cool. So I call them Uprise. And so I said good, goodbye and thank you, and I'll see you later. And I went to my ceremony. And so then we all gather and we walk down to the beach. The toad ceremony is a sun ceremony. So you do this with the rising sun. Um, and uh, so we walked down to the beach. They had a space kind of carved out a little bit away, but not too far away from everything else. And we did have borders. And um, we're sitting there and I, be, I was number seven. Somehow I got number seven. Um, on the list. This is the Bufo ceremony. You basically, you hold space, or pardon me, toad ceremony. You basically, you hold space um, while everybody gets a private ceremony. And so um, I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for the ceremony and it's my turn. And the past two days, I've been really afraid of not being able to breathe. This is something that kind of, it's 
uh, has to do with maybe loss of control, uh, fear of control, fear of trust. There's a, there's a lot mixed up in, into that. And so this is one of the, the fears that I carry with me that I'm, I'm always aware of and always trying to better myself at. And so I was afraid if I did the ceremony, I would stop breathing. So it was a full moon the night before and there was a big moon ceremony and I had given away so much to that. And I had been using the mantra that my friend Elizabeth April, who I was traveling with, um, suggested because we were talking extensively, um, I'm, I'm safe to let go. So I had been saying this and I'm sitting there and I'm saying it, but I found myself getting more and more kind of freaked out like my mantra wasn't working anymore I had used I had used it up or switched the vibration somehow I added my fear to it so I was like it's safe to let go it's safe to let go it's safe to let go and my lungs were squeezing more and more um so I was like okay girl you gotta breathe you've got a ground look around you it's beautiful and so I just started I switched my mantra to love this is what I do when I just don't know what to say. I just use the word love. <laughs> and so I just said love repeatedly. Love. I used breath and sound and let it move through my body like a wave and into my lungs. And this was really helpful. So my body wanted to relieve itself. So I went and told them it wasn't my turn yet. I'm like, I need to use the washroom. And um, so I went to go use the washroom. And as I'm walking towards the washroom, um, coming out of the jungle um, are six men from Panama carrying a man on a stretcher. And the exit is where the same place where the washrooms are. So what ended up happening is um, this, he was dead. Now this was to be confirmed later on, but he, at the time, what happened to me is I saw a very peaceful person. It was very strange. Um, he was purple, blue, and um, he was purple, blue, and gray. And what ended up happening is because we're going the same direction, I walked with them, beside them for about a hundred feet. We were, it, it was just chance. And the, I was looking at his face the entire time. And the strangest thing happened to me. My fear left. It just okay. left. And I can't describe that. And his face was peaceful. I knew instantly that something was about to change. Everything was going to change on that land, on those grounds. And, um, but I was also kind of still in my ceremony state. And I was just feeling that, that peace vibration that was expressed through this dead man on a stretcher. I went to the washroom, I went back and it was time for my ceremony. So I spoke with the shaman and he's, uh, he does not speak English and I regretfully did not learn Spanish before I went. I feel so s silly. Um, and she, so he had a translator. Uh, I just want to preface this with that two of my spirit animals are jaguar and blue heron. Uh, among others, they come in at different points. Um, so continuing on. Uh, I said to, is there any questions you have for him? I said, well, I'm afraid of breathing. And he's like, ah, let's do breath work. So we did in the mouth and out the mouth breath work. This relaxed my lungs so much. In the toad ceremony, you actually smoke. So you have to breathe in deeply through the mouth. And so I did this a couple of times with him. And as I'm doing this, a jag, a white jaguar came and sat beside me. This is common in my personal ceremony experiences. I either shapeshift into a white jaguar or one walks with me. So it's one or the other. I'm very blessed. Um, so... I said to the girl, oh, a white jaguar just came and sat with me. It's my spirit guide. And she's like, he's a jaguar. So the shaman was also a shape-shifting jaguar, which is I'm like, okay, this is why they resonated with me so much, you know? And then um, as we're communicating this, I look over in the ocean, because we're right at the shoreline, a flock of blue herons flew by, a flock. This is my power animal. This is the animal that lives next to my house. They're all, they're all around the world um, and they have cousins around the world. This is an animal that lives next to my house and I've spent a lot of time with in quiet meditation and communicating. I can hear the earth song. When you can tap into the earth song, you can feel the vibration of the bird and you start kind of communicating 
um, telepathically. And I think, I think Mother Gaia translates it on our behalf. Um, so this flock flies by just as I'm about to do my ceremony, just as I'm bonding with this shaman. And the heron medicine um, represents so many things for me. And the greatest thing that it represents, I think, is that I'm an introvert and an extrovert. And sometimes I feel awkward and sometimes I feel amazing. And the blue heron also is that type of animal. So they actually leave the rest. They stay together and their communities there's a very special word for their what a blue heron community is and i do not know it um by heart but i know it's not a flock or a community um but just for sake of description so they they live in their communities six months a year and then they go off by themselves for six months a year this really resonates with me so much because i feel like uh what they do is they go off by themselves they learn things about themselves they have an adventure and they bring that back to their community and share and i feel like that definitely resonates with my past so the blue heron has helped me to accept things that maybe i'm a little bit awkward about and they accept that it's okay to be an extrovert as well as an introvert so anyway they're great friends of mine on my spirit journey and they flew past so now it's time for my ceremony and I go on I, I you can sit or stand I'm like sit <laughs> sit please so I sat down we breathe again and then I he administers the medicine so I wanted to go to the kingdom of light um, I mentioned this in the beginning of the video this is my intention for my ceremony this is my home this is where my memories are from this is what I long for um, I find this in the woods and then the forest a lot of the frequencies that are there um, uh, in the plant life uh, but I was asking to go there like I wanted to sing and dance and eat and smile and talk to my loved ones and just be where love is so pure and, and all contracts are non-existent and all shadows are non-existent I just I just needed to taste it you know and um, so I go deep into my ceremony and like fall back <sighs> I'm very animated <laughs> apparently I was a spectacle <laughs> and I just started laughing and I started feeling the words love and I don't know how many languages flushing through my body and then I could see um, all these forms and these shapes and everything around me I could see the life in the sand I could see the life in the ocean I could see the life in the air and I realized I was home I was safe mother Gaia mother earth this land this space this air this is my home I've been longing for this space for so long and to come to this moment and recognize that it was around me was everything. It was pure, pure divine love. I felt love in every single molecule and atom that was around me and it, I, I was dancing. I was like moving my arms with the breeze, with the ocean. I was lifting my legs in the air, arching my back. I drew a, a, a vagina around my body in the sand and then I put light language all around of it. It was like this complete birthing. And um, I looked at the ocean and I felt the love from the ocean. And I literally reached out and I said, Mama, to the ocean. And just started laughing and laughing. And it was nonstop laughter and love. And I was sighing, going, ah. oh. <laughs> Apparently, the shaman told people that that's called a cosmic orgasm. And I would have to agree. <laughs> it was pure love. Um, and I sat there at the beach and I was just marveling at everything and um, then I started crying the love was so powerful it wasn't it was a release it was like oh thank God thank God thank goodness thank everything thank Mother Gaia thank Prime Creator thank the sand thank the ceremony thank my children for letting me travel and find this in myself and around myself you know and like thank you and then oh that's right I actually felt so much love and I'm a telepathic healer so I can remote travel and remote view I can call on souls there's a lot of really powerful gifts that I'm very very blessed with and I have no idea how it happened I just trust in the moment and so I called forth my children and I saw my son at the top my middle at the middle and my daughter at the bottom and I was like like guys you got to feel this love feel this it's your mom feel what your mom is feeling and oh my gosh I'm gonna cry <laughs> and I saw all their eyes sparkle so I know the love touched them I know it touched their souls I know it touched where they were geographically it was just incredible 
So I felt amazing. I went afterwards and I went swimming in the ocean and I went swimming um, naked. Most people were. This was so beautiful in the rebirthing process that I was experiencing. I was completely loved by the ocean. I could hear singing in the waters. I could see this beautiful light and these light beings all around me that were the using light to create a form for me to visually connect with and the ocean just pulled all this stuff at the waves like <sighs> and it was just every movement was just clearing me and cleansing me and loving me and supporting me and I was floating it was just incredible I was smiling and laughing the whole time <laughs> such a spectacle so all this occurs and then I go and I find my friend after I'm kind of grounded a little bit more um, and I talk to her about this and then I talk to her about, I tell her about my ceremony and I tell her about, then we start going deeper and deeper into the matrix and we go deeper and deeper into all timeline realities and we go deeper and deeper and we share stories and memories that we have and we started seeing these linking connections between her and I and our different stories throughout different timelines and what they brought us and how they brought us to this point and the parallel realities between us. And I've had, I've had timeline collapsing often, but never under these conditions. Never have I been away from my home or my kids. Never have I been in three ceremonies in 24 hours. Um, and there's just all these new experiences. And so what happened was, I started saying, oh my gosh, this conversation we're having, these are the ego deaths that I was looking for. Are we still in ceremony? Am I still in ceremony? Then I started questioning what is real and everything just went, vroom. my whole body started tingling. I was like, am I breathing? Am I not breathing? Am I alive? Am I dead? So then I start seeing all these timelines and just flashing before my eyes and I, um, I could see myself at my ceremony. I went and looked telepathically and or astrally or however, however this kind of field is interacting with my intentions. And I looked at myself having ceremony in this euphoric state. I'm like, okay, that's beautiful. And then I could see behind me another version of me that was dead. It was just like the man I saw in terms of skin tone, but my eyes were bulging out. Like my eyes were like bulging. My mouth was like, ah, and I was purple and blue. And then I was like, oh my God, I died. <laughs> oh, this messed me up. I got to say, like I'm laughing because I laugh. Oh, I died. And then I was like on the beat and I'm like, I got to go outside. So we went outside. I went and I put my feet in the ocean. I'm like, okay, the ocean, like, love me, love me. I need love poured on me. And I felt the sand and the sun. And I was just really kind of, okay, show me, show me. There's all this light around me. What's happening here? I couldn't shake the two realities that I was standing there in that ocean. And it, I could have been my spirit. Um, or that I was on vacation. I, I was like, what reality is really happening? And I had an answer for both. So I was like, well, if I couldn't be dead because look at all these people here. But then I realized how powerful the mind is and I could have invented all those people. I could have imprinted them in my memories to um, teach myself something. So then I'm saying, then I'm like looking, um, I'm, then I'm questioning things like, uh, well, okay, if I'm dead, how do I get out of this place where my mind has placed me so I can go and get to my children as a ghost. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Like I need to be with my kids. And, um, and so I'm going, I've decided to bring the light in down through my cranial nerves and down through my spine. And I can see behind me, this purple face, bulging eye aspect of myself. And I, I was like, okay, so is that my ego death that I asked for separating itself from my body? Right? Then I realized I could be dead and I could be alive and I have to accept either one. So I chose, I accept. Once I did that, the sun and light started coming down on me. Then I started feeling my feet. Then I started grasping a, a, another form of reality and where I was. And I really chose, I accept. I still wasn't sure if I was alive or dead, 
but I was accepted either one. And I'm like, if I don't accept, I'll never figure this puzzle out, you know? And, um, that evening I did a drumming circle. I was really encouraged by Elizabeth April to do this. I was, I've been encouraged a lot to become a teacher and I've been really holding back because sometimes I forget that I'm not 20 <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not ready. Maybe I am. And, um, I just hit me two weeks ago that I'm middle-aged. <laughs> so I think it's time to become a teacher, um, and really kind of do my part in that and so I decided to do a drumming circle by this time they had canceled all the ceremonies be it the police had come because of this man had passed right the one that I talked about earlier so the police had come because this man had passed and they canceled all the ceremonies and the, the polarity shift was no longer there everybody went zoom. everything was kind of on a less uh, separated playing field energetically. And I was hearing words and communicating with people, things like, I feel very lonely. So their feelings were coming up, the work they should have done before they got there, right? So that was the ceremony they had to face themselves with, um, without um, plant medicines, right? Which is a, such a deeper healing, like it's you're going inside, you're not going outside. Again, the plant medicines are a tool. They are not the answer. Your answer is always inside. So, um, so yeah, so I decided to do this drumming circle because I have been on the shamanic path and teaching and um, learning from shamans um, and listening to spirit and learning from shamanic spirits from other realms and helping guys and halls of ascended masters and on. I have been very blessed and I have been listening and healing myself. I'm definitely a student. And uh, so I knew some things that could help people. So I organized a workshop through the encouragement of Elizabeth April. And I, oh, there's a dog. Did a dog, did a dog, did a dog. Okay, dude, stay cool. Yeah. Leash. Can you see me? Mm -hmm. We'll see. This one can see me. Peace sign. Okay, leash on. Oh, thank God. It's a big dog. Any, I digress. I'm back. Who was I? Oh, so I did a um, a quantum light breathing workshop. I upgraded DNA codes as well as um, uh, help people travel to create a medicine meal and call on their spirit guides and protectors and ancestors for guidance, protection, healing, and direction. So um, we did this workshop together. It went really well. I ended up actually doing two private ceremonies the next day. Um, the spirit wanted me to take nothing, so I did not charge anybody for these. I actually took nothing. I kept hearing take nothing, and this is part of the humbleness teaching, right? And um, so <clears throat> I, I did this, and then while I was there, I saw they had a sign for a 7 a.m. Wim Hof breathing. Now, Wim Hof is on my list of uh, techniques to learn. Um, it's something that I've channeled. I definitely will talk about that another time. And so I was up bright and early the next morning for a Wim Hof. So I'm doing the Wim Hof breathing and it's just breathing. It's not a cold water plunge. It's not the push-ups. It's very, it's more of a meditative aspect of Wim Hof. And so we're doing the breathing and I think I'm on the second set. And I am in the stage where you hold your breath at the end and you feel that oxygen pumping through your body. And um, just in case anybody is not aware, Wim Hof breath breathing is you breathe in and out of your mouth for uh, 30 times. And then at the final breath, you hold, you breathe in, hold for as long as you can handle. And you exhale and hold for as long as you can handle. The hold is very magical because the hold is where the healing happens. You have all this oxygen pumping through your body and you have to trust that your body is fine. And so you go into a deeper, deeper state of connecting with your body and seeing how your organs are doing, your lungs are doing, and they're all just fine holding your breath. They're so oxygenated. So once that happens, a lot of release can occur once you identify that you're safe. So I identified that I was safe. Doesn't this ego aspect of myself, this purple and blue and gray bulging eye aspect, come out of my body, look at me, winks at me, and then flutters away. <laughs> so that was that. 
you know, I was laughing, of course, because it's hilarious. I was, there's always a little bit of humor in shamanism, um, if you can see it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that was kind of the end of the ceremonies for me. The rest of the week was communicating and connecting with, um, I did some deep relationship building with uh, a Qigong, um, a shaman from the Lagatan tribe of the Philippines. And his name is Momerito and he's a Qigong uh, and Tai Chi um, pr uh, practitioner. I don't know if practitioner is the right word, but I think it summarizes everything I want to say. And he is also a shaman and teaches light breathing as well as, um, he has quantum light breathing as well. He also calls upon rainbows and uses sacred geometry. He's a very kind of, uh, very advanced and ancient simultaneously. The reason why I bring this up is because the weekend of April 28th, I have, um, I have uh, aligned with him and we've bonded and I'm going to be working with him for uh, over the next year, hopefully or more, as long as we align. And I have him coming here to do a three day workshop. Um, each day is about an hour. Um, the location and the price is yet to be determined. It's not going to be very much. Um, uh, I think maybe 25 a class. Um, I will confirm that and put that out, but uh, it's just, he's so brilliant i think we all need to learn this uh type of teaching and uh listen to him and so that's why I've, uh, we're aligning like this so anyway that was my ceremony that's what happened in panama um i like i said a beautiful relationship building and tools of how to integrate this love and light into my life now and i did do that through um breath work and qigong at this time plus my art and yeah that's my ceremony thank you so much for listening and ciao for now. I don't know how to end this. Oh, end. There we go. Okay, bye. <laughs>